All right, I've been a part of two NPC launches so far, and there's a dominant discussion that happens whenever a new NPC gets launched. There'll be a lot of people saying, I'm not buying this one because it's only got two gigs of RAM. And quite often in the response, it kind of alludes to the fact that they've never actually used an NPC before or a modern NPC. Well, how much RAM do you actually need? Like I get that your smartphone that you bought for 500 or a thousand bucks has more RAM, but do you need more RAM to produce music in your MPC? So this video is going to discuss those details. I'm gonna use information from mpctutor.com. I'll talk about my personal experience if I've ever ran into a memory limit, RAM limit on my MPC, both regular two gig models and also the four gig model of the, uh, the Key 61, which I have in the other studio next door. So what does two gigs RAM actually mean for your productions? So in this article, which I will link below, by the way, so with the two gig model, you have roughly 1.1 gig of RAM available for memory. And memory typically means audio samples, like for the most part. So of that two gigs of RAM, there is a large portion that's taken by the operating system. 700, 800 megabytes of data or so, just to run the operating system inside the MPC. So with that 1100 megabytes of RAM left over, you can load up roughly 54 stereo minutes of audio data. That means that you can go to the sampler, you could record up to 54 minutes of stereo sample data from a vinyl record. Now, are you planning on sampling 54 minutes in a single project? On some edge cases, I could see that as a possibility, but the vast majority of people I do not think are going to sample an entire vinyl record into the memory for a particular project. Most people drop the needle somewhere on the vinyl, sample that, or maybe scan through some files on a computer, or you know, splice.com or something like that, go to YouTube, sample some stuff. In fact, the workflow to comb through a, say a 20 minute file on the MPC, that's not exactly useful with the way it's set up. It's useful for these like smaller chunks to be able to shuttle through with the queue links. Now there could be the thought that you have a lot of select samples that you want to load up in your project every single time. And that could take up say 50 minutes worth of audio data, but still stands to reason that you probably wouldn't load your entire sample library every time you start a project. You would go to the files, scan through, try to find some stuff you like, then load it into memory and then craft your beats that way. Right? So for a sample based workflow, I think the idea that two gigs of RAM is not enough is uh, is a bit strange. And if you don't even use stereo samples, you could technically double that in mono. So it would be like 100 minutes of mono samples or, you know, mix match and all that stuff. Now, where things get complicated is the new instruments that they've released over the past year or two, uh, specifically the heavily sample based instruments. So I have all the plugins loaded up on the MPC key 37 right here. The heaviest hitting plugin in terms of memory is studio strings and even takes a while to load up as well because I have all these samples loaded up on SD card. So if I hit studio strings and then let's say go orchestral, maybe fast section. If I go like this, you're not hearing anything still loading. There we go. So it took a bit to load up, right? I mean, not terrible, but it did take some time. Now, if we go over to the, the actual system resource type of stuff, you'll see the memory is already at 40%. Without the studio strings, it was about 10%, 9% or 10%. Loading up studio strings, we we're suddenly at 40%. So that means that we can at best have like two of these plugins uh, because we probably have some other samples in the memory as well. So. We still need a little bit of room left over for some other uh, stuff going on in the system. So when it comes to the sampled instruments, this is where this could actually be a legitimate problem for people. Now, if you're unaware of how the plugin architecture works within the MPC environment, for the standalone boxes, meaning the hardware, standalone, not connected to a computer type of situation, you can have up to eight individual plugins loaded at any given time. So you can have a drum key group with a bunch of samples on here, assuming you don't max out the memory. And then you can also have key groups. So key groups are samples laid out across the keyboard uh, and they can be of anything as well. So there's technically no limit to those programs aside from the actual memory right there. Whereas when it comes to the plugins right here, you can only have eight total, okay? Now, I know some people get confused on this as plugin means track, and that's not the case. You could have 100 separate tracks in your sequence. So see this, these 
So you see I'm going up on the tracks right here. 128 tracks total. And they can all reference eight plugins, or they can reference the drum groups, they can reference the key groups, they can reference MIDI tracks. This really doesn't take up much memory inside of the MPC. So you're not gonna really hit a maximum right here, aside from the, the actual track limit of 128. But when it comes to the plugins, you can only have a total of eight. So I'll hit plus, there's plugin number two, plus, eight. Now if I hit this again, the maximum number of plugins have been reached. Operation not successful. Now, if I look at the memory, it's 47 uh, in the RAM now. So I have a studio strings loaded up and seven other plugins with the hype plugin that comes with the MPC key 37, which means that we could probably load up maybe 20, 25 stereo minutes worth of audio samples in addition to what we have right now. So let's go to say plugin number two right here, and we're gonna change the sound of plugin number two to uh, another sample based instrument. So let's go to the piano, stage piano. And I like this Atmos stuff, like maybe distant dramas or something. Same thing, gonna take a bit to load. Still loading. Low memory, there it is. Still going and it finally loaded up. I have a pedal plugged in as well so I can sustain. So what we just saw right there is a, a function of the OS that happens. As you can see, it's 67 right now. When it got the low memory warning, it said it was like 80, 82 or something like that. So the operating system within the MPC has to use some RAM to load some stuff in and then it gets rid of whatever workspace it was using. So that is a consideration as well when using stuff like these plugins and also loading long audio files. So for instance, if you were to load a 54 minute stereo file, I don't believe you can actually load one whole stereo file like that because it needs a little bit extra to work with and then throws away whatever. Maybe there's a conversion process that happens. I don't know all the details, obviously. Again, this is something of a workflow situation right here. Like, are you going to use these type of plugins heavily in your MPC? And if you are, then this could be a deal breaker right here. Because again, 67% loaded on the memory with two heavy sampled instruments. Strings, the heaviest, and then piano, which is pretty heavy as well. Uh, but the thing is, there'll be no problem now that it's loaded in here. So there won't be any issue to just like play stuff here. In fact, I'll, I'll drop this down to uh, two bars. So then if I go to track two, load up the string plugin. Let's record some real quick. So the CPU is at 32%, 30%. And if I were to load up at the samples for drums and all that, again, no problem at all. Like if I just as a quick example, go drums. Let's load this chilled trap real quick. Load it up, great. How much RAM did that take up? It took up 1%. So sampled drums and all that and little sampled phrases, they're not gonna take up much memory. It's gonna be pretty minimal on the stuff. If you're specifically looking for large sample-based instruments being loaded up to be able to trigger via the keys or live performance, that's where you could run into issues. And that's why things like a Phantom or a Montage uh, are still really great instruments for live performance because all of those samples load up instantaneously and that hardware is built to be able to load up everything like in a flash. Whereas this is loading up samples directly into RAM, which is a much slower process. Now you might be wondering, what about synthesizer plugins that don't rely on samples? And those have no problem whatsoever. So for instance, I go to track three, I'm gonna pull up another plugin here. Plugin number three, which was just currently the hype plugin. If I go to sounds, Mini D, Mini D is another paid plugin, by the way. It is a fantastic Model D Mini Moog emulation but it is a paid plugin. So I go say the pluck, dirty noise. It's 
let's record this real quick. Sixty-eight percent. CPU went up a little bit. Okay, let's go next track. Next plugin. I will go Jura this time. Let's just which is a Juno 60 emulation, actually a Juno-esque emulation. Like it's kind of, it says it's based on the 60, but there's things that are clearly not the 60. So it's like Juno inspired. Uh, but anyways, memory, 67% on the memory still. So no impact on the memory. If I hit play. Virtually no impact on the resources right there. Like the CPU basically was the same and the memory hardly budged right there. So the actual synth emulation algorithmic style plugins are no problem whatsoever when it comes to like RAM considerations. Like you don't need to think about it at all. And honestly, for me, this is what I use most of the time. I'm either pairing the MPC with a bunch of instruments or I'm heavily using the Mini-D and the Jura and other synthesizer plugins and maybe sampling some stuff. Like if I do use some strings, I'll usually sample it into the sampler and do like a resample type of thing, grab some sort of like performance, chop it up right there and then trigger those samples. And then at that point, you can just dump the plugin and get all that memory back. Let's just max this out real quick so we can see. Okay, we made a bit of a sonic mess. 46% CPU, 64% memory. That's eight plugins being triggered, two heavy sample based plugins, the piano and the uh, strings, and then some high quality synth emulations. I don't think two gigs is a problem, <laughs> right? I mean, there's some edge cases where two gigs will be a problem. If your use cases are you need to use up heavy sample based plugins all the time, or you need to uh, record sampled instruments across the keyboard and have multiple of those load up in your memory, then yes, two gigs will be an issue because there is no streaming from disk yet. Although that could be happening at some point. So in fact, if that does happen, then maybe this whole discussion is moot at that point. There is a scenario though, where I have been close to running out of the memory legitimately. And that scenario is when I hook up an audio interface to the MPC and I record a bunch of tracks to the audio tracks themselves. So there's the audio tracks side of things and you can have once again, only eight audio tracks total by pressing this, go all the way up to next number. Yeah, eight audio tracks. And uh, the audio track implementation in this system kinda, it kinda gets a little hairy at times. I've had the MPC controlling say six different external synthesizers and those synthesizers were going into the audio interface that is hooked up to the MPC. And then what I did with the actual audio tracks is I monitor those audio tracks uh, through this interface uh, and then be able to apply sound effects and all that. And then ultimately I would arm all the audio tracks and record a performance directly inside of the MPC, like say a hundred measures or something like that. And it's actually a pretty interesting way of working. The problem though, is that with the memory limit of two gigs of RAM, you could technically run out of memory pretty fast. So 54 stereo minutes divided by eight is, where's my phone? So 54 minutes divided by eight stereo tracks, that's six minutes, 45 seconds per track that you can have total, assuming you have nothing else loaded up in the RAM. That's a bit unrealistic, but that does assume that you're recording 16 tracks total because these are stereo tracks, right? So you have a left, right for each uh, synthesizer. And that is not what I was doing. I had, I think six synths total and two of them were mono which would technically mean five tracks total if they were all stereo. So let's redo the numbers right there. 54 divided by five would leave me at just under 11 minutes, maximum total length, assuming there was nothing else in the system memory. So in that particular edge case, this system could run into problems. Now, ultimately there's a solution, you go into software mode on your computer and put the MPC into controller mode, basically get similar type of things going on uh, without the limits. You know, you can have more plugins, you can have more audio tracks, et cetera, et cetera. But then you're not in standalone mode. Standalone mode is fun. 
you get it, right? Finally, I do want to wrap things up with the talk of the four gig version. So when you go two gig to four gig, you think, oh, you get twice the memory, right? It's actually a lot more. So if you remember, the two gig has an operating system uh, chunk taken out of it. On the four gig model, you still have that like operating system chunk taken out of it, but then you have an additional two gigs stacked on top of what's left over. So that means you have a lot more memory than just an additional 54 minutes. According to the article here, for the four gig models, you get 3.1 gigs of usable RAM, which equates to 146 minutes of stereo sampling time. Obviously four gig is worth it if you need that sampling time. But if you walk away with anything in this video, I hope you understand how much RAM you actually need for certain productions. Like if you're just sampling some records, chopping up some beats, putting them together in your machine, you're not gonna hit the two gig limit anytime soon. If you are using studio strings or pianos or like sampled instruments from Fabric XL, then you could hit a limit. And at that point, you'd have to bounce that stuff down to an audio track and then delete the plugin out of the memory if you wanted to work that way. I believe on the Key 61s, a Studio Strings instance takes up about 10% of the memory. So I believe you can have eight plugins worth of Studio Strings loaded up on the uh, four gig version. Uh, I personally haven't done that though, because again, I just don't work that way. I don't use those instruments that way in my setup. Usually if I want detailed strings, I'm typically grabbing a VST library on my computer. Also, I didn't really mention effects that you can load up here, like uh, you know, Air Delay Pro and all that stuff. And my favorite personally is Air Flavor Pro. Again, they're paid plugins, <laughs> uh, but I do use them all the time. Those don't really use much memory, if at all. So if you're worried about those plugins taking up a bunch of memory, like you're gonna be able to load up a bunch before you uh, see a significant dent into the memory. Uh, if anything, the CPU is going to get hit harder. And ultimately, this is where my biggest criticism of the hardware is right now. The CPU is technically a 10-year-old ARM chip, and more power on the CPU would equate to better algorithms that could be put into the machine. Like, for instance, one thing that's really missing is a highly detailed reverb plugin, something that could compete against, say, like the Valhalla DSP type of stuff. That's not in the MPC platform right now. And I think it's because of CPU limitations. If you load up a few of those reverbs and their their tails are like 10 seconds long, maybe the CPU starts choking out and maybe that's why they haven't put it into the system yet. But I don't know. That's pure speculation on my part. So for me, in terms of real criticisms from the hardware, it's the lack of an upgraded CPU to give you more power for additional things in the system. I could honestly care less about the RAM. And maybe even the marketing should switch away from how much RAM specifically. Like if they move the marketing away from RAM into how much sampling time you had, like if people knew, oh, you could record up to 50 minutes of stereo samples in a project, I feel like that would put people's minds at rest as to what they actually need versus, oh, just two gig and not four gig. Oh, useless. I can't make any beats on that. Anyways, I've talked too long about this. If you are planning on picking up anything in your studio and you use my affiliate links below, then it helps out the channel. So thank you very much for that. I do have affiliate links for the plugins as well, if you're interested. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for another one. Peace.